Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and now that you know and understand the concepts like state and binding, we're going to move forward and will design the UI which I showed you at the very first of this section. I will try to keep my videos under 10 minutes uh, so that you can watch it on the just uh, quick go, but sometimes you know, videos get really lengthy here. Now let's go ahead and this is a new project that I've created, Login UI. I thought you are now completely capable of designing a new, or creating a new project at least. So we're gonna stay directly from here. It's a basic hello world project, so it does nothing bare minimum uh, project here. Now, we're going to face some of the challenges while building the UI. We need to address them uh, as well. So first and foremost is uh, picking up the color. Now picking up the color is very easy. I showed you the previous resource as well. UIColorPicker.com is one of my website, which will help you to pick up the color. But in the last uh, section, we saw that how we can use assets and can design or can select a color right up here that can be used ju just directly like a string. But let's just say you have another, you want to have another way of designing or setting up the color value, you sh absolutely can do that. So I'm gonna simply design a color. I'm gonna say uh, my gray or my custom gray, whatever you like to call that. So we can define that using variety of constructor which are provided by this color. As soon as I put my parenthesis, we can see we have a UI color, we have RGB space, we have saturation, hue, values, and we have string, we have RGB double and all of that. I'm gonna be using the one which is gonna be using RGB color space with the opacity so that we have the maximum option that we can talk about. Now in the color space, we are already having the RGB color space, so you can leave it as it is, or you can just remove this. It doesn't really going to bother us in this case. And here in the red, it says double. So the value should be in the double format. For example, the 243.0 is the double, but since the RGB color space is just up to 255, so we should also mention that. Since the value should be in the double, it's always a great idea to put a double value. So I've already selected a value that I'm gonna give it to my gray so that the input box looks pretty stand out in this case. So the green is gonna have a simple value of 204. Of course, dot zero should be divided by 255 to keep it in the color space. And finally, the blue value is gonna be 121.0, of course, 255. Dot zero. Now in the opacity, you absolutely have to use a double value, but it can range from zero to one, means one being a totally opaque and uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.6 or 0.5 means half of the opacity. So you get the point, you can definitely play around. So this is another way of how we can have that. Now, one more thing I would like to have it here is I would like to simulate how the login and logout is being, not logout, but yeah, login is being considered. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a stored uh, username and that is gonna be my name. And I will also have let stored password that is also gonna be my name, but all in lowercase in this time. Surely you can edit that. Now, as of now, we are gonna use these values, but later on in the course, we're gonna see that how this can be used using the Firebase or any other database. So that's gonna be a completely different one. So that looks pretty okay. Now, moving forward, we are going to use a couple of strings, a couple of state variable, which you are going to understand a li little bit later on. So I highly recommend to just uh, just declare these variables and we're going to talk about them uh, as we move forward. So these are not gonna be the ordinary variable, these are gonna be state because they are gonna re-render some of the views. So first and foremost, the username which is gonna be of type string and that is gonna be an empty string as of now. Okay, similarly we are going to have a password so we are gonna say I need a password as well, password and that is also gonna be of type string that is gonna be empty. Okay, so these are the two variables, pretty fairly to understand where we are going to use. And uh, there is gonna be another variable which is gonna be a little bit tricky to understand at this point, but I'll try to explain. This is gonna be uh, editing mode, and this is gonna be of Boolean type, and we're gonna put a default value of false. So what is this editing mode that we are talking up here? Now while we have this editing mode so that we can actually toggle some things based on this editing mode, for example, we have a keyboard coming up from the bottom. So based on this editing mode, things can actually be changed. And I did a typo up there. So there we go, now it looks good. Now once we have this one state, we need a couple of more variables as well. So if you remember, in the previous one, we actually just declared one variable and based on that we were 
doing if and else but in many of the examples you're gonna see that we have did fail and did succeed of the kind of a thing so i'm going to simply say auth uh, did fail and that is going to be a simple bool value and the initial result is going to be false and similarly oops similarly we are going to have another state which is going to be var and we're going to say auth did uh, success or succeed however you like to call that uh, we are going to turn that also as a false. We are going to toggle these values and it's going to be absolutely fun. Uh, surely we don't need like two of these values. We can craft it in a way that we just need one value, but I just want to keep that here. If we are not going to use a one, we can actually just remove that uh, later on. Okay, so now the variable part is all done. We will be using them later on. These top ones are the regular variables. Uh, these are the state variables, means based on them, some of the views are going to re-render or stuff like that. Okay, so this is the basic part all being done. I'm going to resume this because we can actually just learn some of the stuff directly up here. Okay, as I told you, in the text view, we have got this hello world. Uh, but sometimes you are going to notice that we use the V stack, H stack and Z stack. So what is that V stack and Z stack? Let's just say I'm going to press command D, no, command shift D. No, it doesn't really duplicate. So I'm going to just copy and paste that again. Uh, so we have this and this is going to give us an error. Uh, build failed because it doesn't know how to do that. So if you want to have multiple elements inside a view, then you have to nest all of these views into a stack. And that's why we use that. So I'm going to remove this up right here. And the easiest way to do it is select that and then right click on that and then you can say show code actions and it's going to show you that what you really want to do and we can embed an h stack v stack and the z stack is also there somewhere i'm not able to see it so we're going to simply just stack it first let's talk about the horizontal stack because that's the easiest one now i'm going to copy this one and we are going to paste that up here and let's see what happens. So we can see automatically the hello world goes uh, into a horizontal manner. Pretty easy to understand. And uh, you can definitely bump up the font in case you want to see that more, but I think this is actually good. And surely we can have like one, two, three, how much you want to have. So we have hello world, hello world, hello world going on like that. Now in these H stack and V stack, what we have is one more thing, which is known as spacer if I wrote that correctly. So we have this spacer and if you'll notice the spacer actually uh, moves the element completely apart here. Now since in my edge stack we didn't introduce any padding that's why they are completely going to the very extent of the left and right. But we can actually definitely introduce a padding. Uh, there we go. And now it's going to be a little bit inside. So surely we can customize the padding value as well to shrink them more. But right now this is the main uh, thing that I wanted to show you. Okay. Now let's remove the spacer again one more time. This is a fairly minimum example of the edge stack. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the V stack now. Now V stack, op pretty obvious that it stacks everything into the vertical manner. Surely we can have more padding and stuff like that. And definitely spacer can be introduced here as well. Be very cautious uh, when you're using spacer because it just moves everything totally apart. So if your outer container is not defined, it's just going to stretch everything to an extent. And surely we definitely can use uh, padding here. And this padding uh, just makes it a minimum spaces at the top and bottom. So these are pretty simple and easy to understand. Let's remove this one and this one here and talk about one interesting guy, which is the Z stack. Now Z stack, although it looks that it's not going to be much used, but the Z stack can be actually absolutely amazing. Now right now, since we have just the exact same thing, you might be wondering, where did that go? The hello world is only up here. Actually, Z stacks is used to stack the things on top of each other. And that's why we are not able to see that. And if I just mention it, hello world Hitesh, now you can see what the mess we are creating. So let's just say you want to create an element in which you want to have a background view on top of that, you want to have a bar or maybe a different color scheme or some, uh, some of these search bar, which is aligned a little bit off, then the Z stack is actually used quite a lot. So this is a quick and basic example and understanding of that. Surely in the Z stack, we don't want to have spacer because what's the point of going like in the depth of this dimension? So that's why we don't have a spacer up here. We have variety of other options going up here. 
but I think that's a very minimum, very basic example of the Z stack. Now with the Z stack, we can actually do a lot of fun and I'm gonna show you that what that fun actually is. But right now I'm gonna just uh, allow you to read more documentation of the Apple website directly on the Swift UI. In the next, web, uh, in the next video, we're going to uh, move directly from here. We will take this Z stack and we'll try to build our login UI. And of course we will be using all of this. So make sure you're also writing all of it. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.